Good afternoon, everyone. This is a recording notice. Uh, this lecture is being recorded. If you have any concerns, you need to contact me, please. So, what we were doing last time, instantiation, and uh, we studied about uh, downward propagation. Downward. Propagation. That is what we also call as forward analysis. Now, if you recall from the previous lecture, we, I think there's some technical issue with the WebEx. So this was a network that we have X was a parent of Y and Y is the parent of Z and the Z was the parent of W. This is what we discussed last time in our last lecture. Now, if I say X is in instantiating, this we indicate uh, by just highlighting this X. So let me uh, clean it out. So for example, this is uh, my X here. So we just highlight uh, our variable that we are instantiating. This is X at this time. So we use uh, the marginal probabilities last time and uh, today we will look on some conditional probabilities within the network. So from the law of uh, total productivity, if you recall uh, this uh, P of uh, Z1, that is equals to, because Z is uh, connected with the Y, Y as a parent of Z, equals to probability of uh, Y1 times the probability, conditional probability of uh, Z1 over Y1. And because we about the binary states. So if the first state is y1, the second one should be y2. So we'll take the probability of y2 times the probability of uh, z1 given that y2. Now if you if we wish to find out the probability of uh, z1 given that x1 so in that case this equation will become the conditional probability of y1 given that because we are interested for x1 it should be x1 here probability of uh, 1 given that uh, y1 and we are interested for x1 here so that that should be y1 comma your x1 well, the same thing applies for the second term probability of y2 given that x1 times your probability of uh, z1 given that uh, y2 and we are interested for x1 here this is what is from the law of total productivity. Now in this uh, relationship, if you see here, Y is the parent of Z. However, it is uh, not for X. 
So this relation using the Markovian condition, I can write it down as probability of uh, z1 over x1 that is equal to the probability of uh, y1 given that x1. Now because as I said y is the parent of uh, z so I can eliminate my x1 from this that's what it gets converted plus y2 over x1 time the same is true for this term as well this is the probability of uh, z1 given that y2 now the next we just need to plug use these one we calculated last time and some of the information was given in the question as well this term is uh, 0 0.9 multiplied by 0 0.7 plus 0 0.1 times 0 0.4 and what I get here is uh, 0 0.87 since it is the binary states the other state of z which is probability of z2 given that uh, x1 that will be equals to 1 minus the probability of your z1 given that x1 so it will be 1 minus uh, 0 0.67 which turns out to be 0 0.33 now the next uh, objective is we can find out the probability of your u1 given that x1 the same rules applies there we will use the law of total productivity but in this case uh, we are interested for probability of w1 so we'll start uh, probability of w1 because i will go on the next slide please So, according to the law of total productivity of W1 that is equals to probability of Z1 times the probability of W1 given that Z1 plus probability of Z2 times the probability W1 given that z2 so we are interested to find out the probability of uh, w1 given that x1 so this turn to probability of uh, z1 given that x1 here times the probability of uh, w1 given that z1 and this should be x1 plus now this terms turns out to be probability of uh, e2 given that because we're interested for x1 it should be x1 here times this will be probability of w1 given that uh, z2 and x1 that's what is the from the law of total productivity now let's apply the Marconi, markovian condition here. if you are looking to apply the markovian condition this needs to be simplified how do you simplify the same rule applies here i will take you to the previous slide now we about the w and the z so z is the parent of w so we can eliminate uh, your x values here in condition we have probability of uh, z1 given x1 times the probability 
of uh, W1 given Z1 plus this term will be probability of uh, Z2 given X1 times the probability of uh, W1. Again, the Markovian condition applies and we get only Z2 here. The next thing is just plug in the values. This value was uh, 0 0.67 times this value was uh, 0 0.5 plus this value uh, 0 0.33 times this value was 0.6 and you get your answer as 0 0.533. So this was, was the downward propagation or forward analysis. I see this, uh, this uh, downward propagation or the forward analysis, I can say that if I have A here, it is going into the B, let's say, and it is and if your A is instantiated, I can easily find out uh, the probability of B given A. Or I can also find out the probability of C given A. So this all we can solve the forward analysis or the downward propagation. forward analysis. Now the analysis that we just finished, analysis, there are two things where, that we did here. The one we used was the law of total probability, law of total probability. And the second thing we use is the Markovian condition. Now, another analysis is called as the backward analysis or upward propagation. Folks, I will go on the next slide, please. In that analysis, the same network, just like A, is going to B and p is going to c here we instantiated c here and we can find out the probabilities of b given c we can find out the probabilities of a given the c so this analysis is what we call as the upward Propagation. Propagation. It is also called as upward infer inference. That's because now upward. We will start from C and go towards A. Or this is also called as the backward analysis. Now, in this analysis, we need to use uh, the law of total probability. Law of probability. And we will use our Bayes theorem. Now I will do the, some examples here to elaborate uh, how do you apply the propagation. 
let's do an example here and i'm going to choose the same network as we have before let's say this is my x this is uh, my y this is uh, my z and my w now if i say that w is instantiated so that means I'll highlight uh, my w by highlighting i'm showing that w instantiated So let's have uh, some objectives here. We want to find out the probability that uh, C1 given that W1. We want to find out the probability of uh, Y1 uh, W1. We want to find out the probability of X1 given that W1. So these are we want to find out using the upward propagation. Now for the first objective here, we want to find out probability of uh, Z1 given that uh, W1, we will use our Bayes theorem. If you recall this Bayes theorem, it will be the probability of uh, Z1 times the probability of uh, w1 given that uh, z1 over the probability of now for this question particularly if you recall from your uh, forward analysis we find out that the probability of uh, y1 was uh, 0 0.84 probability of your z1 was 0 0.652 and uh, the probability of your w1 marginal probability is 0 0.5348 this is the information that we will use in this analysis uh, folks, I need to go to the next slide, please. Now, in this base theorem, this P Z one have point six five two, P W one we have point five three four eight, but this is the one that we need to find out. Now this one we also calculated uh, previously. This value was uh, probability of uh, W1 given C1 that was equals to 0 0.5. This was given to you. The probability of the Z1 over W1 that will be equals to 0 0.652 times uh, 0 0.5 over 0.5348. That is equals to 0 0.6096. This is what our first objective is. Similarly, if I want to find out the second state, probability of Z2, or given that W1, that will be 1 minus 0 0.6096. Now, in terms of uh, second objective, we want to find out the probability that Y1, given that W1, Again, we will use our Bayes theorem here, which says that uh, this would be P of Y1 times probability of 
W1 given that uh, Y1 divided by probability of W1. Now these marginal probabilities we already have. What we need to work on is this thing. This will come from your forward analysis. So for this term, we will use uh, our forward analysis. Now using the law of total productivity, first I need to write down P of W1. That should be equals to. Now if I take you, let's draw it here. So this was the same network as I draw last time. This is one. This is your Z. And this is your W. Because I'm concerned with finding the P of W1, it should be based on your Z. So that will be theta of Z times the conditional probability of uh, W1 given that uh, Z1 plus probability of uh, Z2 times your probability of uh, given that Z2. Now our objective here is to find out the probability of WN given that Y1. So this is what we will incorporate here. So this term will become probability of uh, Z1 given that Y1 times the probability of uh, W1 given that uh, Z1 and Y1 plus the probability of uh, Z2 given that Y1 times the probability of uh, W1 given that Z2 and Y1. This is this term here. Again, we use the Markovian condition on these two. As you can see, Z is the parent of W. So I can eliminate Y impact on W here. So using the Markovian condition, I will have this term as given that it will be only Z1 plus probability of uh, Z2 now we just need to plug in our values here this term was equals to 0.7 multiplied by this term was uh, 0.5 plus this term was uh, 0.3 multiplied by this term was 0.6. So your answer term be 0 0.53. So this equation will be probability of uh, your y1 given that uh, W1 will be equals to now the probability of uh, Y1 this was uh, 0 0.84 multiplied by the next term we just find out the probability which is 0 0.53 and then divided by the marginal probability of W1 which was uh, 0 0.53 Four eight, and we get uh, zero point three two five.
for the second state we can have probability of y2 given w1 that will be equals to 1 minus this value and this is equals to 0 0.1675 Folks, I need to go to the next slide, please. Now, for the third objective, where we want to find out the probability of uh, S1, given that uh, W1, that is equals to again the, we use the base theorem we have probability of uh, x1 times uh, probability of uh, w given that uh, x1 and divided by probability of w1 now these marginal probabilities we have already calculated however this term we will calculate using the forward analysis that we were using before first uh, we will find out our p of w1 so z is the parent of w so this will be p of uh, w and that uh, z1 plus p of uh, z2 times of uh, w1 given that z2 since we want to find out the conditional probability based on x1 this equation can be converted x1 now this term will be probability of uh, z1 at x1 times the probability of uh, w1 given that uh, z1 and x1 this term will be probability of uh, z2 given that x1 times the probability of uh, w1 given that z2 and x1 Now again using Markovian condition, this terms can be simplified to z values only because the parent of w in our network. So I can write it down as probability of z1 given that x1 times uh, the probability of uh, w given that z1 plus probability of uh, z given that x1 times the probability of this w1 given that z2 in this uh, equation you will notice that this term is unknown to you. Now we will use again the law of total probability and then we will find out our probability of z1 given that x1 because x is not the parent of z. So I am going to do this, uh, this term here. Probability of your z1 according to the law of total productivity if you to back here now if you look here on your network i'm looking to find out for z here so y is the parent of z so according to law of total productivity this should be the probability of your y times the probability of uh, z1 given that y1 
plus of uh, y2 times the probability of uh, z1 given that y2 this is one now we wish to find the probability of z1 based on x1 so this term i can write it down as uh, z1 given at x1 so that should be equals to probability of uh, y1 given that x1 probability of uh, z1 given that y1 and your x1 plus now for this term it will be of uh, y2 given that x1 multiplied by this term here we have the probability of z1 given that uh, y2 and x1 now using the markovian condition as i mentioned y is the parent of z so these two terms can be simplified again so that will be equals to probability of your y1 given that x1 times this term can be written as due to the markovian condition z1 given that y1 the probability of uh, y2 given that x1 probability of uh, c1 given that y2 now these terms we are already calculated this is uh, 0.9 times this term is 0.7 plus this term was uh, 0 0.16 times this term was 0. So that turns out to be 0 0.694. If you wish to calculate uh, other state, we can calculate that by subtracting it from 1. That will be equal to 1 minus uh, 0 0.694. That turns out to be 0 0.36. Now, what we are going to do in the next step, this value, that's what we need to use this equation. Folks, I need to go to the next slide, please. Now the probability of uh, w1 given that x1 that will be equal to 0.694 I'm just plugging in the values in that equation times 0 0.5 plus 0 0.306 multiplied by 0.6 so once you solve it, you will get uh, 0 0.5306. Now with this value of uh, probability of w given that x1, we can find out uh, using the base theorem that probability of x1 given that w1. Now, if you allow me to, so this is what I'm going to use now. I find out my this value. I know the margin probabilities, and now I can find out my probability of x1 given that w1. So that will be equals to 0 
multiply it by this value we just find out 5306 over 0 0.5348 and this is equals to 0 0.3968 Now these networks uh, were in the lineup uh, networks. If you want to find out uh, a tree network, we just combine the forward and backward analysis. By that I mean to say, for example, if I have a network, so this is your answer here up to this one. So if I have a network, for example, something like this, In this kind of the tree, we just combine forward and backward analysis. And let's assume that uh, your probability of uh, x1 is 0.4 and it is a uh, binary probability of. Uh, y1 given that x1 is equals to 0.9 and the probability of uh, y1 given that x2 is equals to for example 0.8 this is 0.8 probability And for Z, for example, we have the probability of uh, Z1 given that Y uh, 0 0.7 and the probability of uh, Z1 given that uh, Y2 that is equals to 0 0.4. And for example, for the W, I have probability of uh, W1 given X1 as 0.7 and probability of uh, W1 given that X2 is as 0.1. Now, if you look here, if I instantiated Z here, I will be performing a backward analysis because I will be going from to here and then back to x. However, if I instantiated x, I will go from x to y and y to z. Now I'm going to take one example and if your z is instantiated. And we want to find out the probability of W1 given Z1. Now, because I Z is instantiated, I need to highlight this. So that's what is indicating that we are starting from our Z point here. Folks, I need to go to the next slide. Now, before I go on the next slide, I just want to mention here because I'm interested for uh, probability of W1 given Z1. So what we will do, we will perform a backward analysis from Z and then a forward analysis from X to W. So let's put this here. We will also come from X to W as well. Now the same principles applies here. 
using the law of total probability p of w1 is equals to now x is the parent of your w is one given that x1 plus the probability of uh, x2 times the probability of uh, w1 given that x2 and because we are interested for probability of uh, w1 given that z1 this term will be probability of uh, x1 given z1 times this will be probability of uh, w1 given x1 and z1 plus this terms be probability of uh, x1 x2 given z1 times the probability of w1 given x2 times your z1 now in this this term is what we will find from backward analysis this will come from backward analysis Now for these ones we will apply the Markovian condition. If you allow me to go back. So W X is the parent of W here. So I can write down this term as this term will be probability of uh, 1 given the X1 using the Markovian condition. Now this term will again come from analysis as I did previously. And for this term, I apply the Markovian condition again. So that should turns out to be your probability of W1 and X2. So once you solve it uh, from basis and both of these terms, you can easily find out your probability of W1 given that Z1. I have not calculated it, but the procedure is the same as you were doing before. Now let's take uh, another approach where you have two points. The same. For example, if I have uh, x and I have y here, so they are going into, for example, z variable. For example, the probability of your x1 is uh, 0.1. This is your root node. And probability of uh, y1 is equals to 0.6. This is your another root node. Now, once you come to the probabilities of z here, there will be four possibilities. The first is the z1 state given that. Now, I'm going to write down x here and y here. If you look here, z itself has two states, z1 and z2. And also, the new, uh, root nodes or the parents of z has two states. x has two states, x1 and 2 
y has two states x y1 and y2 so this is this is the combination that we will develop here so combination of x1 and y1 and for example its value is 0.1 the second could be my z1 given that this could be the x1 and y2 for example it is 0.2 the third possibility could be that your given that now i will take x2 the second state of your x combined with the first state of y1 for example this value is 0.7 and the last combination will be z1 given that uh, x2 and y2 for example this value is 0.5 Now the only logical thing that you need to keep in mind, the rule remain the same. You just need to look at all parents when applying law of total probability that's the only difference when you have more than one parent folks and to go to the next slide please Now another thing that you need to keep in mind in the BN root nodes such as uh, X and Y in, in, in our example which don't have any parent root nodes means which don't have any parent are always conditionally independent by that i mean to say if you have a term like x given that y this will become the probability of your x. If you have a term probability of y k x, this term should be equals to probability of y. Or if you have a term where the probabilities are combined, we will take the products of their individuals or the marginal probabilities. Now let me draw that network again because I'm going to do that example. For example, this is was my x here. This is uh, my y, and this is my z. The network I have. So suppose we instantiated x here. 
So what I will do, I will highlight X here. This is indicating that X is instantiated. And we want to find out uh, the probability of uh, E1 given that X1. When X is instantiated. So again, using the law of total probability, Now, as I mentioned in the previous slide, you need to consider all the parents. So I'm going to start here with the of uh, x1. This will become a little bit complex, but if you pay attention, it is not uh, that difficult. So probability of your x1 times y1. Probability of uh, z1. Given that x1 and y1 plus the combination of x1 and y2 now probability of uh, x1 and y2 times the probability of uh, z1 over x1 and y2 plus the probability of let's do it for x2 and y1 x2 and y1 times probability of uh, z1 given that x2 and y1 plus the probability of now we do the combination of x2 and y2 times the probability of your e1 given that x1 uh, x2 sorry x2 and y2 Now, one thing I want to mention here, it does not matter when you write down first because all of them are going to add up. Now, this term in particularly, now this term here, if you see here, that will be the product of your x and y. Same is true for this term and this term and this term. So this will be the product of your x1 and y1. So that should be your probability of x1 times the probability of y1. Times your this term here. Let's leave it, I will write down in the red one. So plus this will be the probability of uh, x1 times your probability of y2. And this term will be probability of uh, x2 times the probability of y1. And this term should be the probability of x2 times the probability of y2. I just want you to use the color so that you can understand it better. Now this blue term is gone. This is the term that we need to write down. That will be multiplied by probability of uh, z1 given that x1 and y1.
plus this term is the product times this term here it will be the probability of uh, z1 over x1 y2 plus the product of these two probabilities which is in blue and then we have the this term here probability of uh, z1 given that x2 and y1 plus the product of these two probabilities times the last term here that should be multiplied by probability of z1 over x2 and y2 Folks, I need to go to the next slide. Now, once you plug in these values, you will get your answer as P of Z1 will turns out to be. 0 0.572 now as i mentioned previously when x and y are conditionally independent then your probability of uh, y1 given x1 that should be equals to your marginal probability of y1 which is given to you as uh, 0.6 now for the same question if i want to find out the probability of uh, z1 given that x1 now what i need to do let me take you back here In this equation here, this one, I just need to introduce my conditional probabilities of x1 with each and every term here. That's what I'm going to do in the next one here. So if I want to find out this uh, conditional probability of uh, z1, given that x1, so I will introduce my x1 into previous terms here. So this will become probability of uh, x1 given that x1 times the probability of uh, y1 given that x1 times the probability of uh, z1 given that uh, one and y1 plus the probability of uh, x1 given that x1 times the probability of uh, y2 given that x1 times the probability of uh, z1 given that uh, x1 and y2 plus the probability of uh, x2 given that x1 times the probability of uh, 1 given that x1 times the probability of uh, z1 given that it should be x2 y1 x1 plus 
the last term should be the probability of uh, x2 given that x1 times the probability of y2 given that x1 into the probability of uh, z1 given that x2 y2 and x1 as what is your condition probability of z1 given that x1 now let's come and uh, look for the simplification of this term let me use another color again if i start from here this term probability of x1 and x1 this will turns out to be equals to 1 here so this whole term will be as i mentioned here x and y are conditionally independent so this term will reduce to p of y2 only oh sorry y1 of y1 and the value of which is 0 0.6 now for this one again this will become equals to 1 this term this term is equals to 1 this term will reduce to probability of y2 only this will be probability of your y2 now how do you find the probability of y2 here equal to 1 minus 0.6 now in this third term this x2 given that x1 because x and y are mutually exclusive terms these will turns out to be zero and again this will turn out to be zero because x and y are mutually exclusive so our only thing left over from here will be this term is equal to one and that should be equals to your probability of y2 times the probability of z1 given that x1 and y1 these are given to you in the question plus this term is the 1 times this value which is now the p of y2 times the probability of z1 over x1 comma y2 this is this term is also given to you now plus this term fourth term becomes zero and the last term also becomes zero so zero plus zero i can eliminate them even so that will be equals to 0 0.6 times 0 0.1 plus 0 0.4 times 0 0.2 and that stands out to be 0.14 this is your p of z given that x1 so for this folks i need to go to the next slide please when x was instantiated in the next example i'm going to instantiate z here now let's draw that uh, network if i have this x and y who are the parents of uh, your W? So, in this example, I'm going to
say that if z is instantiated oh, sorry this one should be z actually not w this is your z here now because z is instantiated i need to highlight this Now in that case, uh, we need to find out uh, what is the probability that x1 given that z1. We will be using our base. So probability of uh, x1 given that uh, z1, according to the base theorem, that should be equal to p of x1 times uh, p of uh, z1 given that uh, x1 so that is equals to this marginal probability of x1 to you which is 0 0.1 times this is uh, 0 0.14 this is uh, 0 0.57 so your answer turns out to be 2.45 into 10 raised to power minus 3. That's your answer for this. Now one thing you need to keep in mind, all these uh, depends on your network. The law of total productivity, you just need to learn the rules and apply. you can apply them on. There are some softwares which uh, you can use for this. In Canada, most of the industries are using Netica. In Norway, Eugene is more famous. In USA, Genie is more useful. And in UK, most of the industries are using bugs this is SA. these two softwares these are free to use and out of these two i highly recommend to use genie software because it is very simple to model bn analysis in the genie i do have a lecture how you can work on genie on the YouTube uh, that was delivered to you in previous semester for some of the students who were with me. If you wish to learn about Genie, you can watch uh, that uh, lecture as well. Folks, I will stop it here and I will take your questions if you have any. Folks, uh, do you have any questions for me? Okay, Marshad is saying, is possible please postpone the project uh, due date? Sir, what is the reason for this?
So the project was given to you at the start of September. It's not give you one week ago that you cannot manage your work. Now, think is that you have your last assignment coming by the end of this month. So if I, let's say, give you one week even for your project, then you will have two things submitted at the same time. I wonder how you will manage that thing. If you guys can manage both of them, I, I don't have any problem extending it for one week. I have the limitations for internet connection. So you have the problems in September? Folks, do you want me to extend it for one week for your project due date? But just keep in mind, you will also have your assignment at the same time. So you might be doing two things at one time. I put this date uh, before your end of the month. You can have your assignment doing it without any pressure from your project. me saying we can manage it assignment and the project so, okay folks so i will uh, give you one project and uh, you will have your assignment as well i'm okay with that okay you're welcome usman you're welcome fatima no problem is there any more question for today folks So I will upload this uh, lecture and uh, go through this. If you have any questions, you are more than welcome to ask. Now try to learn how to use the Genie software. As I said, there is uh, one lecture which I delivered in the previous semester. You can watch it on the YouTube uh, channel. And uh, if you have any questions, you can ask me. Long is saying, can you upload the YouTube link on the, okay, I will share that link as well on the D12, okay. Okay, thank you very much everyone and see you on Thursday.